Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio. That's AAMP.TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all-natural, dry-aged USDA Prime Angus and Wagyu steaks and chops. Wait till you try their best-in-class New York steaks, the filet mignon, of course, the king of all, those cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes. Certainly the best in the business I've ever had, probably the best you ever had. Hell, wait till you try those Prime Wagyu burgers. Mercy! Truly as good as it gets. UppercutChops.com. That's www.UppercutChops.com. Give them a call. Find out what's for dinner. 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935 for UppercutChops.com. Nice round of applause for them. Yes! All right, and a big welcome in everybody listening in on our network affiliates from CBS, NBC, and Fox. Of course, all of our independents. Everybody also on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, and WOW Cable Television. Thanks for joining us also in hotels from coast to coast, gaining about 4 million impressions per hour. 4 million impressions. That is a huge amount. We're in all Nielsen rated markets, by the way. We're here with a very special guest right from the very top. We're going to talk cigars and stars with... A longtime friend of the circus and a personal friend. We'll let him introduce himself for everybody. Hey, Sal. Yeah, Don Horn here. You know, an old, old Super Bowl quarterback from the uh, from the Packers. Back it up, Bart Starr at Super Bowl number two. But uh, you know, those uppercut uh, uh, steaks sound pretty good right now. I tell you, this sounds juicy. Yes, I like, to, I like to put my put my teeth in a couple of those puppies. <laughs> oh, buddy, I got to tell you, I I made a three and a half pound prime wagyu ribeye mind you it wasn't even a tomahawk it was just massive it was bigger than my head and i of course have an enormous head if you know what i mean and you didn't invite me no i didn't because it wasn't enough for two people because i'm such a slob but we'll have to see on our next trip through your neighborhood see if we could bring some of those uppercut chops with Right. We got to make sure we have the sound effect. Right. Because if we don't have the punching sound, well, let's face it. What's the point of uppercut in the first place? And, you know, by the way, the, how it got its name. Actually, I named the company just because I could. But how it got its name is because it's actually from the ranch owner is a four time WBC boxing champion. How do you like them apples? Yeah. 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 That that is a massive undertaking and is from a mountain of a man on top of it. All right, so hey, let's talk cigars, let's talk stars, let's talk an event that's coming up on the 9th of February. That's over in Phoenix, and that is the Ditka and Jaws Cigars with the Stars event. Tell me all about that. It's, uh, yeah, Cigars with the Stars. It's a great event. It's during Super Bowl week. Uh, we're going to have it, you know, like I said, February 9th. It's going to be at the, uh, at the, uh, the Hilton Resort uh, at the peak, right north of uh, downtown Phoenix. And uh, I've been attending, attending that event for about five or six years now. I got involved with the, uh, uh, the Gridiron Greats quite a few years ago. My old teammate, uh, Jerry Kramer, started this, uh, started this foundation about 15, 17 years ago. And uh, then he kind of you know, evolved out of it. Uh, Mike Dick and his group took it over. And what it is, uh, Sal, uh, this is one of the events that we try to raise money for and funds to help out former NFL players that are dire need one way or another, that the NFL itself, the league, the Players Association, the alumni either refuse to help or cannot help in any way, shape, or form. There's a lot of old, older guys, uh, you know, me being one of them, I mean, that era, but they're a lot older than I am. They really need help and assistance, and the league's not stepping up and, and doing enough for them. So, well, I have to tell you, I, I remember going about – well, hell, it was last time Philadelphia was in a Super Bowl, right? I think that was, what, five years ago. Didn't we go to Minneapolis together back then? Yeah, we, yeah, we were in Minneapolis together. It was so doggone cold. We had to stay inside. It was too crowded. You know, no one smoked cigars because you couldn't go outside to smoke them. Right. And then we had, we had to stay I, inside. I remember, Don, I got off the airplane, and it was six below zero. And, of course, I was wearing shorts and a T-shirt and flip-flops right from Las Vegas. And, a, you know, it was a little bit chilly out, but I stayed in there. I toughed it out. And I'm running oh, yeah. from my hotel to the store and this one and that one. And I'm still wearing shorts, a t-shirt, and flip-flops. 
<laughs> and of course, everyone's laughing at me like, what the hell's the matter with this guy? But I remember that and it was, it was a really cool event. And that was the first time I had been to one of those. And look, I'm not a cigar smoker, as you certainly are aware of, right? I, I run for the exit as soon as I smell the smoke. But at the same time, it was such a cool dynamic in there because there were people from Pick Your Favorite Sport, from Pick Your Favorite Walk of Life that were invited guests. But then there are, somehow I got in there. Oh, it's because of you, right? But the reality was it was a cool event. You got a chance to talk to people just because... You're normal people. Everybody's in the room talking and there's no egos, no nothing. Well, really, largely no yeah. egos. But it was a great event and I really am looking forward to going to this one as well. Well, looking forward to seeing you there next week for sure. There's uh, quite a few uh, you know, there's celebrities or a- actors, actresses, like you said, celebrities from all sports, maybe a politician or two. And we all just kind of hang out, um, you know, have a couple of uh, toddies, so to speak, top shelf toddies that's... Uh, complimentary and uh, uh, some real top-notch cigars and it's just good camaraderie it's about a you know a, about a four-hour deal that evening and uh, it's just camaraderie and uh, we raise a you know we raise a lot of money for a good cause uh, both the gridiron greats the the uh, the uh, you know the uh, gridiron greats assistance foundation as well as uh, you know Jaworski's uh, youth foundation that he does a lot of stuff for the youth back there in New Jersey you know, he's a pretty good guy, Ron Jaworski. You won't find a better man than than, uh, than Jaws. In fact, there's so many of these guys. I've got to know a lot of these, especially the Raiders, for example. Used to hate the Raiders playing against them, you know, way back when. And now I'm finding out after knowing all these guys, getting to know them after, after we uh, retire, you guys are pretty good guys. You guys aren't as bad as I thought you were. And you, we find that out across the country. A lot, a lot of these guys are... You know, decent, decent human beings that want to help their uh, help their brother out, and they're doing a good job of doing it. Well, you know, it's the players are the players. The players are are look at the grand scheme of things. If you're working in a corporation, and Joe Blow works in a corporation, Bobby over there works in one, Don works in one, I work in one. We're just working for our companies. The players are the players, though. They're just regular guys, right? So we can't hold the players accountable for what happens from the top down in the organizations. And for me for me to get past that with your Green Bay Packers, it is what it is. I'm be, Me being a Bears guy, and you know, obviously the Bears have really dealt with some tough times, but for me to get past, okay, look, it's the organization, but the organization, actually, it's a, it's a good organization. I, I've never met a, well, I can't, there was one person to be nameless that I, I'm not wild about from, that played with the Packers organization, but that's just one person and, and one bad apple can't spoil the bunch. But I would You're say, about me, are you? no, it's not you. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Don't worry. No, no, it has nothing to do with you. But largely speaking, I've, I've come to the realization that it is the organization from the top that makes some of the people a little bit angry. And just like Packer fans don't like Bears fans, it's not about that. Well, look, if, if people can get past the teams that they play for and look at the players themselves. And I think a lot of people are transitioning to that in today's time, Don. They're buying the NFTs for the players. It's the jerseys that the players are wearing, and it's not necessarily the logo on the jersey, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I totally agree, So Totally agree. You, you know, know and, uh, I listen, Don, I, and I've, I've got to say this. You may recall this, and I'm going to have to carry this over through the break. And this was a, a Jerry Kramer situation, right? And this is this this was one of my favorite things that have happened. And I'm going to tell you about this. In fact, I'm going to let this run through the break. I don't I don't give a damn. I don't care. I'm just going to let this whole thing go. And so when I was at the stem cell, the stem cell event, remember when Jerry was just announced as an inductee for the Hall of Fame, right? Okay, yep, and so we were right, sitting yeah. at that round table, right? Right. It was yourself, and, and it was uh, it was Dave and and Jordan, Jerry's kid, Jordan, and I believe I, I want to say Lynn Larson was at that table, and a few others, right? right? And we were we were at that event over in I think it was in Troon, over in that uh, northern Phoenix Valley area, and Jerry was signing things. Remember when he was signing stuff for everybody? Right. There's a long line. So it was yeah, facing, I was facing you, Jerry was on my left side. We're at that round table and, 
And Jerry got done signing whatever he was signing because there was a line 100 deep, whatever it was. And they put that, he put, he was looking around. I was like, all right, who else? Who else wants me to sign something? He put that big paw on my shoulder because, you know, he has hands about this big, right? These enormous hands. So he goes, hey, kid, turn around. I want to talk to you. And so I turn around, I'm like, what do you want, old man? He goes, you want me to sign something? And I, I turn around, I'm like, well, you could sign my ass. So I turn around, I said, no, thanks. And I turn around and you had said to me, hey, do you know who that is? I'm like, I know who that is. <laughs> I, I just thought it was great, right? And so th- this, this is one of my favorite stories. And then a few minutes later goes by, grabs that shoulder again. He goes, hey, kid, turn around. I want to talk to you. Can you pick my pen up? I'm like, with those big hands, you could probably just sit up straight and just grab it from there. Grab your pen. So I turn right around and I go back to doing my own thing. And I'm talking, I'm just busting up, looking at you guys. And I'll tell you what, when we come back from break, I'm going to come back and actually, you know what? Screw the break. I just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the break go. Here's the music, folks. In case you're wondering, this is our outro music. Never mind the outro music. We're going to just play right through it. So anyway, a few minutes later, Jerry, again, I mean, now he's flustered because nobody's really turned his, their back to him. And, well, and he you can see, he's, he, <laughs> Don, he's getting a little red in the face, right? He, he's getting a little red in the face. And I got I to gotta tell you, the, the look on his face when I turned around the, the next time, he goes, uh, you know, I want to talk to you again. So I said, okay, all right. Well, what do you want to talk about? And so he says, well, why don't you want to talk to me? <laughs> and, and I said, well, you know, Jerry, listen, I don't need to hear about your stories. He goes, I got a story for every one of these scars on my hands. I said, really? He does. He does. <laughs> oh, I know he does. But you're going to love this. And so... The long and the short of it was, he goes, you know, you see this one here? He points to this one. He goes, ah, that damn buckus. You know, he stepped on my hand and then he bit my hand in the same play. I'm like, that's kind of a neat trick. Tell me more about that. So he goes and tells me more about it, right? And I said, you know, Jerry, here's a funny thing. Back the 1991 NBA Finals, I'm rumbling around the Fabulous Forum because that's what they called it back then in L.A., the Fabulous Forum, right? Right, then it was the Great Western Form. Anyway, so I'm walking around. I had tickets to go to see my beloved Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls! And so I walk up to this guy. He's just sitting by himself. I'm like, huh, look at that. That's Buckus. So Buckus is just sitting there by himself. I walked up, and I'm like, very nice to meet you, right? Chicago Vocational High School. I know the story very well. I'm a Chicago kid. And so, you know, we shook my hand and it was just like having your hand completely engulfed, right? Like if the if my finger, oh. right, it's, it's ridiculous. And so I, I looked at his hands and I'm like, my God. I said, I, I know you played ball. This was before I was on air. I said, I just got done, you know, a career playing baseball, but I have never seen anybody in my life with hands like that. He goes, ah, that was that, that damn Jerry Kramer, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so the best part about it was I turned to Jerry and I had this in my head the whole time I said you know yeah. I said listen Mr. Kramer Mr. 70 something whatever your uniform was I gotta tell you buddy I remember having a conversation 30 years ago with a guy by the name of Dick Buckus maybe 25 years ago 25 years ago and he had the same scars, and he said the same damn thing about you with the scars on his hand. I don't want to hear your belly aching about the scars on your hand when I saw what you inflicted on the other guy. So there, and it was, what a great moment that was, I have to tell you. <laughs> All we did, and we laughed for the next half hour or so, just yip-yapping yeah, about stuff. Yeah, I but, didn't hear that. First time I heard that story. Good one, good one. Oh, that that is, out of all the things that I've done, and folks, welcome back to everybody who's just tuning in here on the Sports Circus. I'm here with Super Bowl champion, and we're going to call him a legend because this guy is a living legend amongst humans and also an AFL, or he's an NFL champion as well, right? So you're a two-time champion, yeah. right? You two timer, yeah, you? I was good at one time. You know, this is, by the way, I can't this remember, is. Remember, but I was good. I this was is good Don Horn, folks. In case you're just tuning in, he says he was good at one time. Look, you had to be really good 
at one time. That one time had to be a very long duration, Don. I have to tell you, nice round of applause for you. And of course, welcome back to everybody on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Honolulu all the way over to Atlanta. Everybody on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Wall Cable Television, thanks for joining us. Hotel TV as well. We have to do this because we're at the top of the segment. And we're here, of course, with Super Bowl champion and NFL champion Don Horn, also a Gridiron Greats Hall of Famer, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? That's true. Yeah, I was I was inducted to the Gridiron Greats about five years ago, I think. Yep. Yeah, so. That's great yeah, stuff. I, uh, I, I remember when... Uh, First time I saw, Dick, I haven't seen uh, Mike Ditka in years. He walked up to me and he says, "Hey, I remember you." So, <laughs> made me feel good. Yeah, so that's good stuff. Again. You know, Dick. Uh, I think I think hopefully Butkus is going to be at the event next week, next Thursday night in Phoenix at the Cigars with the Stars. He's on the list, so hopefully he'll show up. Well, make you sure know. that Jerry Kramer shows up too, so I can get these guys next to each other and get a corroboration of that story, folks. In case uh, you missed the story, make sure you go back to the recorded. Show and you can find that on Apple, on Spotify, on Google, Audible, Amazon, you name it, we're there. You can't get away from us. And of course, we'll make sure that this show is distributed to everybody so they get a chance to hear this. Fun stories, and this is what people could look forward to at the Ditka and Jaws Cigars for the Stars on the 9th of February over in Phoenix. And this is an event, it goes on from 8 p.m. until midnight, or I guess until the cigars and the drinks run out. Not really sure how that one works. But of course, Don's going to be there and a bunch of celebrities are going to be there. Don, give everybody a quick recap of that, if you will. Well, you know, it's a great event. It's next Thursday night in Phoenix at the, uh, at the, Hilton, uh, at the Hilton Resort in Peak, right north, of, uh, right north of downtown Phoenix. And uh, there'll probably be 80, 80 plus uh, both former current NFL players, uh, many Hall of Famers, some pretty big names, some all pros, uh, some people that are, that are future Hall of Famers that will be there. Other celebrities will be there from other sports, some entertainers, some singers. There will be, some, uh, there'll be some, you know, some entertaining going on. It's just a great event. It's a great event. There will be hundreds of people there. It's a, both an indoor, outdoor event. You know, they smoke the cigars outside. You go back inside if it gets too cool. Uh, some people don't like to, you know, they want to get away from the smoke. Other of us want to be out there smoking uh, a good stogie or two, just reminiscing and telling each other old war stories and uh, and just just seeing each other, you know, you know why we still can. You know, we're not getting any uh, Some of us aren't getting any younger like you are, Sal, but uh, yeah, know, we, we like to go uh, commensurate and kind of visit with our, uh, you know, with, with, the, with our brother as long as we can. Well, that's the idea, and, and it's it's a nice event to go to for a great cause, helping, of course, the Gridiron Greats, the charity there, and also the Jaws Youth Playbook as well. You know, we had Ron Jaworski on our show, oh, probably two and a half, we'll say two and a half years ago, and that was probably, don't take it personal, probably our highest rated show, of course, because you've been with us, Don, and, and you know... <laughs> But it's, it was a wonderful show, and, and he is such an electric personality. We made sure we plugged everything he was doing. But, of course, the the event in Minneapolis that I went to, and you were there as well, that one came up, and he was belly aching about the cold. I'm like, yeah. He goes, yeah, but you yeah. should have been at the one at Miami. I'm like, well, nobody invited me to that one. Oh, the, yeah. Well, yeah, the one in Miami, the one in Atlanta, the one in San Francisco, fantastic. You know, you, you, they're, they're, they're great events. And, and you know, Jaworski. You know, like I said earlier, they don't come any better than Ron. Ron's just a class guy, you know, pretty doggone good speaker, too, good order, and uh, uh, just just a fun guy. And, uh, you know, to be involved with something he's involved with, uh, you know, it's a big, uh, you know, it's a pretty big feather to be uh, to be associated with a guy like Jaworski. And, you know, Mike Ditka, and now uh, uh, Erlocker's now kind of stepping in, helping Mike, Mike out a little bit because Mike's slowing down a lot. He's not moving around a lot either as Jerry Kramer. Yeah. Right. Jerry's slowing down a lot too. So, uh, you know, like, like we still can, we want to show up and visit each other uh, and, and see each other as often as we can. Well, I think that's what we're supposed to do in life. We're supposed to surround ourselves with the people that we want to be around. But at the same time, we need to be around people that make us happy and make us feel good because this clock is a very short clock, young man. And I, I have to say that I've seen my friends and I'm, I'm a few years younger than you. I've seen a lot of my friends just dropping off and it's scary. People are dropping left, right, and center. And so you never know what's, what tomorrow's going to bring. 
Yeah, you don't. And, you know, I, I, a lot of my former teammates are no longer with us. And I go back every year to to, to Green Bay. And uh, they think they said off, off of Super Bowl one, there's only 12, 12 players still alive off of Super Bowl one. And uh, Super Bowl two, the team I was on, I think there's 19 still alive or something or whatever. And, you know, somebody said, a, somebody made a comment not too long ago like this. There's 19 of us that are still alive on Super Bowl two. But only only ten of us are aware of it. Wow, know? wow! Because some of them have dementia, you know, Alzheimer's. They have no idea where they are. It's really sad to see, go back and see uh, see these players how they are today, and and how they kind of you know disintegrated into just a you know almost a nothing. That's what we're trying to do is just trying to raise money for this foundation, the Gridiron Greats, what they do to help people. Just because you know these guys need help, and the league just refuses to help them. That's crazy. It, it's it's crazy to imagine. I, I, one of my friends runs a, a, a group that does a similar thing to be nameless. It doesn't matter because this is not about them. But when I think of your club, I think of your teammates. I, I know Marv Fleming. You know, he's Marv. still around. I talk to Marvin every now and then. And he's just one of those electric personality guys. He's out there golfing and doing it every day. But let's face it, we're not getting any younger. And you've got to hang out with the people that you want to be around. And this is a nice way to help out those players and families through the charities raise a little bit of money for a great cause and help those people that weren't paid hardly anything back in the day when you played. I mean, think about that, Don. Think about your payroll back when you were playing compared to what's going on today. How do you feel about that? I was a first round draft choice. I made fifteen thousand dollars, Sal. Wow. Fifteen thousand. That's out of San Diego State too, out of playing with Don yeah. Coriel, uh, correct? Yeah, Don, yeah, Air Coriel and uh John Madd was our defensive coordinator, and and my roommate for a little bit was a graduate assistant coach, and then they made him move out. Uh, was a young kid named Joe Gibbs. He decided wow. he wanted to get into coaching. He was a great coach then. But anyway, yeah, going to Green Bay and uh, uh, you know, yeah, it's just you know, you know, like you know, like Vince said, you know, Vince held his ring up, and he says, you know, we can't pay you a lot of money, but at least you have a chance to get a ring if you stay here, if you're here. So I mean, that was, you know. But you're a young kid, you know, you're going to pay me, you're going to pay me $15,000 to play football. That's over a thousand dollars a month. Doesn't get any better than that. That's heaven. You know, that's the way you think back. And this is back in the mid sixties, you know, and before you were born. Uh, <laughs> actually, no, I was still around when you <laughs> won your Super Bowl ring. No, I was, I was already thought of and conceived and born. So no, the good news is that look, I'm in the old guys club, but not the really old guys club, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's okay. But no, it's the idea that, look, you're paid to play a kid's game, but you are paid hardly anything, which seemed like a lot back then. Look at what they're making today. And then think about the idea that, well, just like in the NBA, well, we have load management. What kind of garbage is that? If you can walk, get out there and play. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Vince Lombardi, we had a guy on our on our football team in the 60s. He broke his tibia, you know, the small bone in the lower leg. And Vince said, doggone it, you can play. You can play on that leg. That's a non-weight-bearing bone. You can play on that leg. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, and that, but that's the mentality, Don. And the player, and, and sorry, players today, I know you're making mad money, whatever. But there was a very particular toughness to the game back when you played versus what's going on in my opinion that's my opinion i can say that what i see today i see people go off the field with a hangnail they can't get out there they they, they just don't get out there and tough it sometimes you'll see a player get out there and do it. we saw brock purdy get out there and play even though he couldn't play he still tried to contribute even handing the ball off and i love that about him well yeah, yeah today these wide receivers and these running backs they you know they they, have, they run a play or two and they do this and they want somebody to come in for them right away you know, I mean, I remember playing with a guy named Floyd Little when I was with the Broncos, you know, the finest running back I ever played with. And uh, I didn't realize it then, but the more you gave him the ball, the better he got. He didn't want to come out of the game. And Jerry Kramer, not Jerry Kramer, uh, uh, Jim Taylor said it years ago. They asked Jim years ago, what's the difference of the game today compared to when you played back in the 60s? He said two things. Number one, we all had an offseason job back in the 60s to offset our income. Number two is we didn't run out of bounds like they do today. They're always running out of bounds. Well, you know, what I find interesting 
in today's time, because there's so much money involved, we're just going to go right through the break again. I don't give a damn. The reality is players are making business decisions on the field. They don't want to get hit because they know they could get injured and it could cost them a bunch of money. Maybe they're a free agent this this coming season, whatever. And so let's face it, they don't want to get hit because they could get injured. You never know what's going to happen. Just like we saw the essentially the last play of the game in the Cincinnati Bengals game with the awful hit on Mahomes when the guy was already a full step out of bounds. That should have never, ever happened. That is a mental mistake. And it cost the Bengals, in my opinion, going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it did. It, it cost them. It probably it very, you know, good point. But you know, that's that self-discipline and frustration coming out, et cetera. With some of the some of the calls are kind of, you know, I mean, some of the calls in that game, I don't know, I kind of question or whatever. But you know, going back to the don't want to get hit. Look at look look how the uh, the Pro Bowl. What's that turn into today? That's a it's farce. a flag football it's game. A well, a couple of years ago, they were they were, they were just you know they weren't tackling. They were just you know. Grab, 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 as Lombardi used to say. You know, they weren't even, they were just pushing. They weren't doing anything. And uh, it's just how it's evolved to what it is now. It's just, it's kind of pathetic. And a lot of people say, well, I've heard this from a few people. They think that football kind of lost its soul when it, when it started playing indoors. Yeah. And, you know, I'm one of those guys, Don. I say, look, you played, for example, in cold weather places. You played in Green Bay. You, you played in Denver. You know what that's like to play in the, I think, in, in Cleveland, too. Did you not? Cleveland, yeah. Right. I so did. you know what it's like to play outdoors in those cold mud, places. Mud, mud and the crud and the ice bowl. Right, right. And of course, you know, we remember last time we brought you on when we had Jim Tunney on the show, right? When he was the referee for the ice bowl. Yeah, so we, we brought a surprise guest, and that was you. And so the reason I bring this up is because I look at the natural progression of the game and I say, all right, we go from warm weather in the summer, late summer, right, uh, early fall, and then we go all the way into the winter time. Why wouldn't they? And I, I know it's all about one thing. Here it is. Show me the money! Right? It's all about show me the money. Oh, show me the money. It's, yeah. To me, it's an embarrassment because the Super Bowl – should be played, in my opinion, as a natural progression of the season. So, hey, maybe it, if it rotates from stadium to stadium, so maybe one year it's in Miami, whatever, and so maybe they're playing in a rainstorm, whatever it is. Maybe they're playing on a perfect sunny day in San Diego. Well, no longer San Diego. Let's just say in some other location, whatever. Yeah. The point that I'm making here is that the game has the perfect conditions instead of being the progression of the season, which I think a lot of people will embrace the idea if they're playing the Super Bowl in Green Bay or Buffalo or Cleveland or Chicago, where the elements are there. And let's face it, this is what they've worked for all season. And the teams have actually had to adjust as the weather gets colder and colder and colder, right? And so it would only seem reasonable to assume that maybe the game is played in Foxborough or whatever, or in Philadelphia, whatever. My point is, I would like to see that, and I, I I know I'm not the only person saying that. What are your thoughts on that? I you know I have I have no qualms. I think it's a good idea. You know you know play, you know play in those different venues and play in the elements and you know let the uh, let the chips fall where they may. That's what the game's all about. You know the mud and the crud one day one week and perfect day, you know beautiful. So I couldn't catch the ball because the sun was too bright. Or, you know, the old days when Max McGee would drop the ball in the L.A. Coliseum back in the 60s, he'd go back to the huddle and tell Bart that he couldn't see the ball because it was so smoggy. He couldn't right. see the ball because it was so smoggy in the <laughs> Coliseum. You know, but that, those were the elements, you know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, was, you know. Well, but think about this, Don, because, I mean, look, if the players are essentially going through their evolution through the season, then it would only be logical for them to continue that path. Oh, and by the way, a big welcome back to everybody who's just joining us here at the bottom of the hour for the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, here with Super Bowl champion and NFL champion and Gridiron Greats Hall of Famer, Don Horn. Nice round of applause for Don. Of course, I'm just the guy with the biggest head in the room. But more importantly, we want to welcome back everybody that's watching on television, Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, Wild WoW Cable, Hotel television in 210 markets across America, in all your upscale resorts and hotels. Wow, great stuff. 
Great conversation going on, folks. In case you missed any of this, make sure you go to thesportscircus.com and click on the recorded shows, which they're all under podcast, although this is not a podcast. This is a regular FCC-regulated show. There are 2 million podcasts out there. Don, did you know that? There's 2 million of these things. How do, I have no idea. Don, how do people actually find what they're looking for, right? Because only the top 1% of the top 1% are the ones that are really heard. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, yeah. It, it's I ridiculous. Like it. So yeah. I would like to see maybe a Gridiron Greats show because Amp TV, who produces our show, Amp TV stands for All Ages Media Programming, Amp TV could actually produce shows for people out there and handle all their distribution. I know of one company to be nameless that handles all the podcasts for the athletes, but they don't know how to do distribution. I've talked to them about this maybe a, a few weeks ago. They have no bleeping clue how to get that content out to the radio, out to the television, out to the things that matter so the regular mainstream audience can actually hear and see these things. That's what AMP TV does. Check them out at AAMP.TV. Also, you can email them at info at AAMP.TV. That's info at AAMP.TV if you have a show or a show idea and you want to get it out there to the public. But Don, I wanted to see one for the Gridiron Greats. I want to see one for yourself as well. I mean, sure, you can come out here wherever you want to, but come on, man. Well, you know, that's not a bad idea. I'll put the I'll put the word into the Gridiron Greats people and see what they think. Is it, it it makes sense? Get the word out, distribute the word, you know, and reach more people for a, for a good cause and uh, and you know grow the organization, and the foundation. You know, that's a win win. Yeah, that wins for everybody because let's face it, if Gridiron Greats had their own regular show, maybe they did a daily show, then there would be guys like you and all the others that have all these tremendous stories, and they yeah. could. Listen, the audience wants to hear stories. That's why they go to these events, like the the Dick and Jaws Cigars for the Stars is coming up on the 9th of February down in Phoenix. And what's that location again? It's the uh, it's at the Hilton Resort at the Peak, right north of downtown Phoenix. I believe it's on 16th Street, and uh, it's right it's close to downtown Phoenix. Um, great indoor outdoor venue, fantastic resort, the Hilton Resort at the Peak in phoenix arizona next and that Friday, runs next, next thursday night uh february 9th from uh from I believe it's like eight to midnight that's right and so who's going to be there again for everybody just tuning in oh gosh i mean there are probably 75 or 80 former and current nfl players um many celebrities actors actresses and and, and celebrities from various sports around around the country around the world really You'll be amazed who shows up to this stuff. It's just amazing. Good entertainment, good music. Uh, it's just a great event. Top-notch cigars, top top shelf booze. Uh, it's just it's just good a good good event to attend. One of the best parties, probably the most highly demanded party to attend during the whole Super Bowl week. Uh, it's just a great event, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Right, and you know, folks. In case you happen to go there, in fact, you could go to Ditka. I think it's the what's the website? Ditka and Jaws or Ditka Jaws? Uh, the, the best way to do it is just go to gridirongreats.org. <clears throat> gridirongreats.org. Gridiron. Okay, so. Gridirongreats.org. Yeah, and there's a link for it right there, right? There's a link for the Cigars with the Stars. Okay, that's the one. And, you know, folks, I'm going to be working the red carpet there, of course, so I'll have a chance to talk with everybody as they rumble on through there. And yeah. that's going to be an honor. And I'm, right. I'm thankful for the Gridiron Greats for putting that together. You got, you got, you got the gift of gab. You're going to be in the red carpet. You're going to see, you're going to see a lot of those people. You're going, to, you're going to know a lot of them, and some of them you're going to meet for the first time. Right. And what a great opportunity that is. And thank you, of course, to the fine staff at Gridiron Greats for making that possible. And, of course, this wouldn't happen without you, Mr. Don Horn, as well. A nice round of applause for you because somehow, for whatever crazy reason, you go to bat for me. I do. I do. You're a good man. <laughs> but I thought you were going to say, well, you know, you're you're good in my book. But then again, well, I can't read. You're a bear fan. That's only that's one thing I hold against. I can't help it. I was I was born right down the street from where they played. You know, when they played at Wrigley Field back in the day, I was that's born at St. Joseph's that. Hospital a mile away from there. So, you know, it that's is what it is. Have. Wrigley Field. I tell people that they don't they don't believe it. I say we played in Wrigley Field. 
Right. Great venue. Great venue. But you know the the Bears played at Wrigley and the and the Cardinals, the old Chicago Stags played at Comiskey Park, which turned into the Chicago Cardinals. And why were they Cardinals? Because the Illinois State Bird is a Cardinal. For all you people that don't know, this is before they migrated down to St. Louis. Right. So they were the St. Louis football Cardinals. And then, of course, then they go to Phoenix as the Phoenix Cardinals. And then they turn to to be the Arizona Cardinals. But ironically, the state bird in the state of Arizona is what? A Cardinal. How do you like that? I didn't know that either. Yeah. Learn something every day, Sal. That's why they don't pay me the big bucks. (laughs) You deserve you deserve more. (laughs) I deserve something. How about how about just something? Right. How about a cigar? How about a cigar next next Thursday night in Phoenix? I'll have to chew on it because I don't I don't smoke, but I'll just walk around with a big cigar. I'll, I'll look right. like uh, one of the one of the old characters in those old cartoons from the 1930s and 40s. <laughs> right. I have to just bite the end off, I guess, and just walk Ooh, around with this like picture. George, like George Burns. Okay. Yes. Like Groucho Marx. Well, actually, you know, yeah, Groucho did it because George Burns actually smoked his. Yeah. I remember seeing that because once in a while I watched the old. Uh, him and Gracie on the old, old black and white reruns. You can still see the smoke because he's still puffing on that. Yeah. <laughs> he's always kind of looked the same. Okay, so that event's coming up. And, you know, next year, if I'm not mistaken, the Super Bowl is right here in Las Vegas. That's right. There'll be another, another big party out there in your backyard. And, uh, you know, we hope to have you involved with it too and promote the heck out of it next year because uh, it gets bigger and bigger every year. Well, we could promote it, of course, here on KQQY in Las Vegas, as well as our TV affiliates that we have here and regionally as well. Look, that party, hopefully it's in a very large room. Because I remember, in fact, there was an event, a Gridiron Greats event here, and it was over at the Red Rock at one point. I remember you and I were over there talking, and and we went into there. And in fact, it was it was a, a, a very nice room, but there's no way... A place like that could hold something to the scope of what this party really is. No, you know, yeah, this the cigars with the stars event. That's an indoor outdoor event. Usually, if if there's a like you know, if you're in a venue like Red Rocks or something, it's going to be in a room that may be contiguous to the pool or an outside area, a big a big patio type of a thing where you can just kind of mill around and go from one area to another. It's a pretty large. You know, it'd be a pretty large room, pretty large area. It won't be just confined to one one room. It'd be, it'd be two or three combined rooms. Right. It would it would probably be one of those big banquet halls with an attached outdoor to right. the area for everybody that wants to get out there and get their smoke on. But I can imagine. I, I don't know what kind of a a crowd they're expecting for the one in Phoenix, but my best guess is if it was right here in Las Vegas or when it's in Las Vegas next year, my best guess is they'll probably draw three to 5,000 people and people will throw money at it just to be a part of it because it's in the entertainment capital of the world with the best players and superstars and legends, et cetera. And and, and I must say one of the biggest supporters of the Gridiron Grace um, Assistance Fund is Mark Davis and the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. They are one of the biggest supporters of the organization. And uh, a lot of respect for what the Raiders have done uh, in helping out the cause. You know, and you don't know how much that pains me to say that. You know, Buddy, I gotta, I gotta tell you, look, but what was, so true. Don, what was, remember we took a picture together where we're, we were over by Dave when you were in the cigar lounge or whatever, and you were wearing a particular shirt yeah, the Charger shirt, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. It was. I mean, look, I'm I'm a Chargers guy for for the AFC. I'm a Chargers I guy. I just there's no better hat in the game than the Lightning Bolt, period. Yep. And so it pains me to hear anything positive about the guys that play locally here. But I do know some of the old guys, and the old guys are great. The new guys, I don't really know them. I don't know I this mean, generation of Raider player. Guys, the, old, the old guys are fantastic guys. Yeah. They really are. They really are. In fact, we're going to bring Mike Haynes back onto the show within the next couple of weeks. Mike's one of those great guys. He's just a, a great personality. And there are scores and scores. Of, but my favorite Raider from the old time is Tom Flores. Tom yeah, is, he's like Santa Claus. Great man. Great man. Yeah. Yeah. And great I hope man. to have him involved in this. And of course, we have a chance to talk on holidays. Well, the grandkids and this and that. And 
He's just one of those guys you want to be around. And his attitude is infectious. So when they bring it, of course, to Las Vegas, hopefully we'll have all of those guys and maybe acclimate some of the newer guys in there as well. Yeah, be a good idea if they could do that. Yeah, fantastic. It's a great idea. All right, so let's, let's talk football for a minute here, just because we can. <laughs> now, we've got a couple of teams in there that, frankly, I thought it was going to be the other teams playing one another. I did not think it was going to be Philadelphia and Kansas City. I thought it was going to be Cincinnati and San Francisco in a third game. I, uh, I was, I was pulling for both the 49ers and the, uh, and the Bengals. I'm not a big Bengal fan either, but I like Joe Burrow. I think he's one class man, both on and off the field. And, uh, many say he could be probably, he, you know, if he's not the best, he's one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the league right now. And speaking of uh, the chargers, you know, I was, I was on the, we had alumni weekend a couple months ago and I was on that field in SoFi and, uh, and what's his name? Uh, Herbert, um, he walked past. I can't believe how tall he is. That's a big boy. He's a big, you know, and I couldn't believe how tall he was, but, uh, anyway, I was impressed with, uh, you know, with, with that team or whatever, but there's a lot of great, I mean, young, good look, you know, good QBs coming up that are, uh, you know, the old guards kind of walking out the back door, you know, you had, uh, you know, Brady, you know, officially retiring today. Uh, you know, I don't know what Aaron's going to do in green Bay. He might stick around for another year, maybe two. Don't know where, if he's, you know, he'll probably stay up there. I'm guessing, but, uh, you know, it's the new guards taking over. And, um, you know, I was hoping, I'd like to see the Chargers uh, get a little bit further, you know, into the playoffs than what they did this year. But, you know, the Jaguars were playing good ball towards the end of the season, too. So they caught them on a good day. So who do you got? Who do you got? Who do I have? Who do you got? In, in, in the game? Yeah. Who do you got? Uh, I hate to say it, uh, and I'm sick of them. KC. I'm yeah. tired. Of, I'm, I'm tired of KC, but uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I think on paper, I mean, I think they're going to win. I really do. Yeah. The only but, thing that my question with Kansas City, it comes down to their ability to stop the run. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Here's the problem: if they stack the box, let's think about this for a minute. If you stack the box, then what are you going to do? You're going to have Philadelphia move the pocket. Right. And give Jalen Hurts a little bit more time. Right. Yeah. And now you're going to have you might have somebody doubled in the secondary, but you're going to have man coverage everywhere else. And so something tells me it's a little easier to act than react. So that is going to hurt Kansas City, as I see it from my perspective. Again, I didn't play this game like you. I'm a former baseball player. That's a good point. But, you know, Casey's, you know, the old school, Norm Van Brocklin said it back way back when. I don't care if the other team scores 50 points as long as we score 51. KC's got the ability to put the doggone points on the board, you know, uh, and they can come from behind. You know, they've done it time and time again. They're down two or three touchdowns right. in the second half, and they turn the doggone thing around. They make the adjustments at halftime. You know, I think a lot of those plays, if you look, you know, Mahomes, he'll drop back, he'll do this and he'll do that, and he'll sit back in a pocket for a second or two. Then if you notice, the whole pocket floats to the right. Yes. You know, and, and all those plays are kind of designed. You know, they're running a route, and all of a sudden, at a certain point in time, these guys know where to break. And, you know, Mahomes, you know, it, it, the offense that, uh, you know, they, that they put together, it's just, it's, you know, it's kind of phenomenal. It really is to watch them, you know, it, once they're clicking on all cylinders. Yeah. I mean, the only way that a, a defense is going to have a sustained success against Kansas City, for my opinion, from my viewpoint as a non-football player I always make sure I mention that as I see it you've got to push the pocket right and and force him to his offside exactly what Tampa did in the Super Bowl against him and forced him to his offside so he's throwing across his body is that a fair assessment yeah that's fair that's fair but uh, but you you just you got to number one you got to contain him number one you got to you can't let him get outside but then again you have to force him outside. If you, if you rush him up the middle, he's going to go one way or the other. You right. know, so you got to contain that. You know, you got to have two approaches to it. You got to bull rush him up the middle and get him outside sooner than what he planned on doing. Then you have to make the adjustments according to it to get him or whatever. But it's you know, it's uh, it's going to be a, it should be a good game. You know, hopefully it should be a real good game. I hate it when it's once. You know, too often the best games are in the playoffs. You know, in the championship games. 
And then the Super Bowl gets to be, you know, when it gets too one sided, it gets to be a blowout. You know, it's a boring game. Hopefully, this game isn't like that. Yeah, I mean, it, for me and my purposes, by the way, folks, we're just going right through the break. It doesn't matter. No commercials, no nothing, none of that crap today. No, why? Because we can. And so, the, <laughs> as I see it, it's my opinion. I believe the real Super Bowl was the Kansas City Cincinnati game. That's how I feel. That was the best. That'll probably be the best game in the playoffs that we'll see all year. Correct or incorrect? What do you think? And, 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 and like I said, it's, you know, uh, football is a game of mistakes. And you, when you see players make stupid mistakes at the wrong time, that costs you the game. That's what blows coaches' minds. That why did you make that mistake at that time? Why did you do that at that particular time? You know, like you said, you know, hitting hitting the homes out of bounds, fifteen yards closer, the guy barely knocks it over. You know, uh, it, it, it's it's so frustrating, and uh, you know, but to have a game go down like that, that's the way it should be. I mean, for the fans and everybody else, that's the way it should be. Right. Too bad and the team has to lose. It, it's unfortunate that the game ended the way it did, but in my opinion, that was the Super Bowl because whoever won that game was going to win it. It didn't matter. And, and it was the field was sort of tilted towards Cincinnati's favor. <laughs> Joe Burrow just stayed the course, stayed the course. But remember, Cincinnati got burned on that whole decision because remember, that game should have been played in Cincinnati, not in Kansas City, because they already beat them head to head earlier in the season. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Good point. That's a good point. So Cincinnati yeah. was the one that voted against that. The you know, only they one. Be, or, you know, or, or they could have maybe done the same thing they were going to do with Buffalo. Move it to a neutral site. Right. Move the game to a neutral site if those two, you know, whatever. But. Yeah, I think it was unfair. But then again, I'm not in the football business. I'm only here to talk about it with guys like you that have played the game. But also, we think about what could have happened. And a lot of people are the same point. Of, uh, they have the same mindset. And they say, you know what? I'm almost going to protest this because... I don't give a damn because it should have never happened in the first place. And those two teams that are playing there, you can say, yes, they deserve it. They won. Okay, so be it. But at the same time, one team was treated unfairly in the same way. And I'm going to say it right here. In the same way that Cincinnati was treated unfairly in the last minute 41 of the Super Bowl previously played when suddenly, magically, the laundry started coming out with the last 100 seconds of the game. And Cincinnati was called for everything. And even the fact that they're driving down, going for, at worst, a game-tying field goal. But they're going down for a W. And, you know, they're moving the ball. It's fourth and two in Rams territory. Aaron Donald clearly lines up in the neutral zone. But somehow, they turned a blind eye to it. I'm not really sure how that happened. I believe, in my opinion, that game was already fixed. It's just my opinion. And we've heard stories, Don, and I know you can't talk about it, but I'm talking I, about it. I, 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 I've heard that assessment before. I've heard it before. Yeah. I, can't, I know I'm not the only one saying it, but let's fake it. It's what the money wants. People ask how I prognosticate games. I say, I don't care about the weather report. I don't care about who's injured. I don't care about who's doing whose wife. I just want to know what does the money want right here in Las Vegas. That's the only thing that matters, in my opinion, because the league has the casinos and the sports books in their pockets. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't think of that. I, all I know is that, uh, you know, everybody, you know, uh, you know, you, you hate to even talk about it, but, you know, if, if you think a game is kind of rigged or fixed or whatever, it's not the players that do it. No. The players aren't going to do it. It's going to be the referees. That's right. They're the know. cheapest guys on the field. It's going to be the it's going to be the, uh, the zebras, they're, right? They're the ones that are going to determine the outcome of the game. They're, you know, they have that ability to, and hopefully, you know, hopefully it doesn't. You know, but there's there are a couple of times when I even played that I thought that, uh, you know, I couldn't believe the guy was. I thought he was a flag man for the rock out of the line. Man, he kept throwing that throwing that flag every other right, play. <laughs> yeah. right, right. I had two I had two touchdown passes called against the. I was with I was with the I was with the with the Broncos, I threw two touchdown passes back to back, fifty some yards each. On each play, the flag came out, called back, called back. And we lost the game. But anyway, that, well, apparently the money it. went I the other way, that, Don. I haven't thought of that in years, but anyway. <laughs> well, look, I don't want to implicate anybody in my <clears throat> in no, my thought no. pattern, but 
to me it's a possibility though it, you know it's, it's you know it is a possibility to where i grew up in my particular neighborhood i have every reason to believe that is the case it's just my own opinion again well, you know you you and guido hung out a lot together. hey don't worry about vinnie Bombots and joey bag of donuts if you know what i mean those guys <laughs> Those guys aren't a part of this conversation right now, right? We got no neck Tony over there too. But, but, but the reality is that we've seen a lot of questionable calls. And even guys I know that are playing today, they tell me, when I ask them off the record, I'm like, what do you think happened there? Yeah. They said, I don't know. The, the coach called a particular play, which I don't know why the coach called that play because it was painstakingly obvious that – that was not the play we should have run. There's no reason to run X when we're supposed to be running Y. And so you ask yourself, how far does the money transfer? Are there wire transfers going left, right, and center? I don't know. Again, this is my own theory. It has nothing to do with Mr. Horn. It's just what I see. And to yeah. me, it's as clear as a blue sky without the stripes in the sky, all those chemtrails. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought of that. It's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. So it's just what perspective are you looking at it? See, I see it in baseball all the time, Don. I see the umpires squeezing pitchers when certain things are going on on the field, right? Maybe the over and under is seven and a half and the score is, I don't know, four to one in the seventh inning. Well, let's face it. The over still needs three runs. Well, how the heck are they going to get three runs? Let's make the strike zone just a little bit smaller, right? Yeah, put the guy on first base. Yeah, exactly. What what happened? Oh, we're gonna you you're arguing balls and strikes. Now we're going to kick you out of the game. Yeah, it's stuff like that. I see this happen in baseball, and it certainly keeps my eyes open for watching football games as well. But then again, I'm not trying to spoil it for people. I'm just trying to open your eyes because some things do happen that are remarkably questionable, even in the National Football League. Yeah, yeah. You hope you know, and if it does, you hope it's very far and few between. But you never know. There's so much money in that business. I mean, multi-billion dollar business. It's billions of dollars now. It's yeah. just, you know, I always said for years, I've been saying this for years. I think in many ways, the National Football League has as much, if not more power than the U.S. Congress has. If they want yeah. something done in this country, anything the NFL wants, they, they, can, they can get it. They can well, get at least it. certain members of Congress, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's get back to this. We have a few minutes left here. Let's get back to the Ditka and Jaws Cigars for the Stars. We want to recap this. Tell everybody about the event once again. Okay, we have a, we have a big event next uh, next week. It's Thursday night in Phoenix at the Hilton Resort at the Peak. It's called Cigars with the Stars. It's from eight o'clock to midnight, and it's a great event. It's one of the best parties to attend during Super Bowl week. There'll be probably anywhere from eighty to ninety. Both current, former NFL players, celebrities from all walks of life, entertainers, uh, current players will be there. Uh, complimentary, uh, well, you know, the, the ticket price, I mean, it's a pretty hefty ticket. Uh, it's a $500 tab, but, you know, it's a, it's a great event, great entertainment, top shelf booze, fine, fine top shelf cigars. It's all you could drink, all you can eat or whatever, and it's just a great hors d'oeuvres. It's a great event to attend. It's a both indoor, outdoor um, event. It's just a fantastic event. I've been to about seven or eight of them now over the years, and they get bigger every year. And uh, it's, it's really a, a fun, fun event to attend. Let's think about this for a minute, Herb. So the ticket price is what it is. When people go to these autograph signings, they pay money to meet people for meet and greets and stuff like that, right? A lot of times they'll pay $50, $100, whatever, just to meet somebody, Don. The reality with this, if there's going to be 80 to 90 current players and legends, et cetera, et cetera, and there's going to be other maybe actors, actresses, whatever, musicians, whatnot, that pencils out to be less than five bucks a person yeah. that they yeah. get a chance yeah. to meet. And to spend four, you know, a good four hours with them, you know, just talking. I mean, you just you walk up and talk to them. I mean... It's, you know, they're friendly. Uh, you'd be amazed. You'll be amazed how considerate everybody is. Right. And you know, and the cause is a great cause. It goes for the, uh, you know, goes for the Gridiron Greats, the, uh, the assistance fund that, that, that we uh, we use the uh, the funds, the proceeds to uh, to help former players that are in dire need 
older player, even 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 younger players too, that uh, need help that the league won't help. Uh, and so, you know, they turn to us and we assist them. And then, uh, you know, in Jaworski's Jaws Youth Playbook, it is, he does so much for the youth there in the New Jersey, Philly area that, uh, you know, a lot of the proceeds go to help the, the youth there too. So it all goes for a good cause. It's all, you know, it's it, it's a 501c3. Uh, majority of it would be, uh, I don't know, you have to talk to your accountant, but uh, if you get a ticket, I imagine a portion of it would be tax deductible. Uh, I'm no accountant, but you could look into that too. So, so well, it's a great event to attend. It is a great event to attend. And I think for all those people that are, they, they want to meet people, or sometimes they just want to be in the room because they're maybe a little bit shy. But the reality is, for all those people that want to be a part of something much greater than the game, so to say, because this is about the people in the game. This is about the lives of the people in the game. And there are people that just want to go and be in the room and just to watch, be a fly in the wall. This is your chance. Check them out at gridirongrates.org. Is that not correct? Gridirongrates.org. And then you go to the uh, go to the link for the Cigars with the Stars in Phoenix next week and give you all the information and details. You can buy tickets online um, and, and have them ready for you when you walk in the door. And uh, it's a great event to attend, and all for a great cause. It really is. And I'm looking forward to it. I haven't seen you in a minute, so it would be nice to get a chance to see you and all the others over there as well. And I'm really looking forward to it. So, folks, again, gridirongrates.org. Get your tickets there if you're interested in helping out some people that really could use some help. And let's face it, nowadays with the ticket price as what it is, I mean, come on, that's almost the ticket price of getting into any old concert or venue in the first place. And, of course, then you have those meet and greets and all this other crap. Well, guess what? At this you get a chance to meet and greet everybody in the room because there's no special rooms you have to go to to pay extra money to go meet this person. Everybody's in the same venue, and you get some cigars too. Yeah, cigars and good, you know, good drinks and some pretty doggone good hors d'oeuvres too. Some good food. I'm looking forward to see if they have coconut shrimp. I love coconut shrimp. I just oh. hope they have it. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm sure they will. That's I'm good sure stuff. Don, any final words here before we sign off? No, just uh, hope to see everybody in Phoenix next week at the Gridiron Greats uh, event there, Cigars with the Stars, and uh, look forward to it. Everybody, uh, be safe, drive safe, and uh, look forward to seeing you, Sal. Yes, it's been a while. All right, folks, that's going to do it for the Sports Circus today. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. Big thanks for the great Don Horn for joining us today. We'll give the super applause. That would be Super Bowl champion and NFL champion and Gridiron Greats Hall of Famer, Don Horn. And folks, we're going to see you in about 23 hours right here on your favorite station. So until then, so long, everyone.